Our next convergence test is called the ratio test. And this one, it turns out, is one of the most important tests for reasons that we'll learn later on. I mentioned at the end of all this section on infinite series, we're gonna have a big application of infinite series. And it turns out that the ratio test is crucial to that application. And it's the one that we'll apply over and over again when we do those problems at that point. But for now, we're going to start with a series that we're interested in testing convergence for, and we're going to build a ratio, hence the name ratio test. So this ratio we're going to call P, and it looks complicated at first, but notice what's happening. What we're doing is we're taking the ratio of subsequent terms. In other words, here we have the second term divided by the first one, and then the third term divided by the second one and the fourth term divided by the third one. And we're looking at what happens as we trace further and further down the list, does this ratio of terms have some limit? So we take that ratio, then we use an absolute value, which clears out any negatives, and then we take a limit, which just means we're looking further and further down this sum, and we're comparing one term to the one that comes after it. And if that limit is less than one, it turns out that that's enough to prove that this series converges because it's enough to prove that the terms are getting smaller fast enough if that ratio of subsequent terms has a limit less than one. But if that limit is greater than one, that tells you that those terms are increasing, which of course tells you it diverges. And then if that limit equals one, this test is inconclusive and you would have to do some sort of other approach. If it equals one, you'd basically be on that tipping point between convergent and divergent series and you'd have to have another test tell you which way this thing tips. But the ratio test, if that limit comes out to something other than one, you can tell whether it converges or diverges. So it looks really complicated at first, but all we're going to do is we're going to think about what the form of the series is and then what the form of a sub k plus 1 would be, which is pretty simple. And then we'll do a little algebra to see what that limit comes out to. So it's relatively simple in practice. I've got an example here to start us off. The series from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k factorial. And I mention this one because a lot of times the ratio test is especially useful when you have factorials for reasons that we'll see as we go through this. The algebra simplifies nicely. It's also really helpful when you have powers of k. And so we'll see an example after this where there's a power of k, which might lead you to think about geometric series. And it turns out that if you test a geometric series with the ratio test, that's one way to prove that a geometric series converges or diverges as we found according to the rule we saw earlier. But anyway, for this example here, in our example, a sub k would be 1 over k factorial. And just as a reminder, the factorial, for example, 6 factorial would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it's this descending product like this. So a sub k would be 1 over k factorial. a sub k plus 1, all we do is we replace all the k's with k plus 1. Now it's important when you do this that you use parentheses as needed. So for instance, if we had 1 over k times k factorial, it would be 1 over k plus 1 in parentheses times k plus 1 in parentheses factorial, and so on. So it's just important to watch out for that. There's simple mistakes you can make. But then all we need to do is divide these two. So we have a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. And we're going to see how this simplifies. 1 over k plus 1 factorial divided by 1 over k factorial. First, we can simplify this combined fraction and just write it as k factorial over k plus 1 factorial. Remembering that dividing two fractions, you can multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So then notice that we have this 
pattern k factorial over k plus 1 factorial and we want to see how this simplifies. To do this I'm going to come back to a specific example. We have 6 factorial written up above. If we had 7 factorial that would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 and so on. So notice that if we divided 6 factorial by 7 factorial everything would cancel except the 7 in the denominator. Because of the fact that this descending product contains everything including the factorial below it. So 7 factorial is like 7 times 6 factorial. So a lot of things cancel when you do this. So the punchline here is that k factorial over k plus 1 factorial just simplifies to 1 over k plus 1 because of that cancellation. So that's one reason that factorials will often pop up when we're doing the ratio test or more specifically we'll pick the ratio test when we run into an example with factorials because this simplification works really nicely. So p is going to be the limit as k goes to infinity of this here which we simplified to 1 over k plus 1. We should use absolute value signs here but they turn out not to matter because k is always positive so these are all positive values. But notice what happens as k goes to infinity 1 over k plus 1 goes to 0. And the ratio test takes this value of p and compares it to 1. And since p is less than 1 according to the ratio test this series converges. If we got a value greater than 1 it would diverge and if we got a value equal to 1 then this test would be inconclusive and we'd have to try something else. So that's one example of the ratio test. I'll show you a second one that's very similar but involving an exponent of k. Here we have 2 to the power of k divided by k factorial. So again a sub k is 2 to the k over k factorial. a sub k plus 1 is 2 raised to the power of k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 factorial. So again if you're going to divide them you could take a sub k plus 1 and I'll just jump straight to the step where I multiply by the reciprocal of a sub k. So now notice what happens. We have powers of 2 first of all. If you start canceling 2's from the top and the bottom you're going to wind up canceling all of the 2's in the denominator and you'll be left with 1 in the numerator. So we'll have a 2 in the numerator and then the k factorial and k plus 1 factorial will cancel in the same way as we saw in the last example. So we'd have k plus 1 in the denominator. So then p would be the limit as k approaches infinity of 2 over k plus 1 and that again equals 0 which is again less than 1. So this series also converges according to the ratio test. So the ratio test really boils down to a little bit of algebra where you're simplifying and often you'll use it when you run across exponents with powers of k or factorials with k and the reason is that these subsequent terms cancel nicely when you apply the ratio test in those cases.